Wow. That's different. I really like that. Peshods or Pichods or <laughs> Yeah, now I'm gorgeous. Although probably fuzzier was better. Okay. So this is not what I expected. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? Welcome to another Thursday. It's uh, the beginning of a <laughs> new weekend. Do it that way. Beginning of a new weekend. Uh, Thursday is always a great day to do this. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to plan for whatever you're going to do this weekend. And uh, that's why it was suggested. Somebody suggested to me that I do it on Thursday. So that way you can think, huh, maybe I'd like to have that this weekend. And uh, so that we taste the bourbons and sometimes other things, rums and Vodkas and gins and scotches and <laughs> all sorts of stuff. But but we're here. We're doing our thing. Hey, Zach, how are you? Zach was messaging me a little while ago, and I had to stop looking at it because I had to get ready for the show. I was scrambling to do everything I had to do to get this ready. And, you know, last week was just, you know, when it comes to the broadcast, I couldn't get the things to sync up and couldn't get the tech to work. Well, this time I took extra time to make sure I could get it to work. So it looks good. Uh, we are going to be doing four roses, um, and because I can't see the perforation on these things, I'm, oh, you know, it was right there. It was right there. There we go. But well, I even came off, it came off like it was ready for me to take off its clothes. <laughs> All right, so four roses. Everything looks great. Thanks, Zach. Four roses. Uh, we're going to get into a little bit of this. I, I actually had to go pick this one up today because I didn't have this one. There are four products that Four Roses does. Let me pour this and I'll get into that. Let it sit. All right. So they have the Four Roses, which is just the Four Roses bourbon. It's 80 proof. Then we're going to do a series. It's going to be a four-week series. Every Thursday we're going to do this. Then next week, we're going to get into the Four Roses small batch. Then the week after that, we're going to get into the Four Roses small batch select. And then finally, we're going to wrap up with the Four Roses single barrel. I'm not going to tell you which one I like best, but this is going to be the next month of Burp Casts. Okay? All right. So I just wanted to give you a, a heads up of what we're going to be doing and why we're going to be doing it the way we're going to be doing it. Um, so Four Roses, what is that all about? Well, first, I'll tell you the story, but first, before we get too far into that, I want to show you the photo. And um, I'm really excited, actually, about this photo. I took this earlier this year. The neighbor has a tree that flowers beautifully, and I... Just played with this a little bit, and it turned out exactly the way I wanted it to, and it's gorgeous. And um, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. Oh, I'll tell you in a minute. So uh, the thing about Four Roses, why is it named Four Roses? Well, Paul Jones Jr., the founder of Four Roses Bourbon, became smitten by the beauty of a Southern Belle. Can you imagine that? It is said that he sent a proposal to her, and she replied that if her answer was yes. She would wear a corsage of roses on her gown to the upcoming Grand Ball. Mr. Jones waited for her answer excitedly on that night of the Grand Ball, and when she arrived in her beautiful gown, she wore a corsage of four red roses. He later named his bourbon Four Roses as a symbol of his devout passion for the lovely Southern Belle, a passion he therefore transferred into making his beloved Four Roses bourbon. Isn't that nice? All right, so there's the scuttlebutt behind Four Roses and why they name it that. It's, it's all about a, a southern girl. Okay, so um, the other thing I wanted to point out, do you, does anything look different about me? Oh, anything at all. Could it be my Staven Thief bourbon steward pin that I've earned because I'm now a certified bourbon, bourbon steward, even though I can't say it. <laughs> I will proudly wear this on the Burbcasts and uh, when I go out for a drink. And, uh, hey, Tom, how are you? And, uh, 
and so on. Uh, this, I'm, I'm proud of this, and I'm, I'm going to go next for the executive bourbon steward, which is more expensive and more time-consuming and scary. <laughs> but that's what we're going to do. All right, so tonight uh, we've got the regular four roses. I will tell you, I don't know if I've ever had this before. Um, I went to a film festival. It was really kind of neat. Uh, Allison West from Cincinnati runs this film festival, and she's got, it's called, um, uh, uh, I forget now. It sounds like it's got, it's got something to do with Cincinnati and cinematography or something. I can't remember the name of it all of a sudden. I feel like a moron. Anyway, she was really nice, and she invited me to become a VIP. I got to go and attend the festival the, all the days, and she didn't charge me for it. I had, uh, I had actually submitted a film, and we weren't accepted to it, but she and I respect each other greatly. And I, She's an artist. She's fantastic. And I feel terrible that I can't remember the name of her film festival, but... Um, she invited me to go, and on the table upstairs in the VIP area was a bottle of Four Roses. And I do not remember, I cannot remember if it was that or if it was this, or if it was a smaller bottle of that. I don't remember. All I remember is that at that time, I had just started getting into bourbon, and I thought that it was a little thin. And if it was this, that makes a lot of sense, because this is an 80-proof bourbon, uh, and we're going to get into this, what makes this special or not so special, depending on your point of view of it, as we get into it. Um, the Four Roses brand is actually kind of unique. There are 10 different recipes that go into the different bottles, the four different products that, that Four Roses makes. So let me get into that, and, and I want to show it to you because it's really unusual. Um... Okay, so here is the recipe. That's not the recipe. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what was I looking for? Is it this? No. Is it this? No. Is it this? No. Huh. All right, well, you're looking at this now. I'll tell you what it is. I must not have done the other graphic, and I thought I did, or I did it wrong. Um, this is the makeup of this particular bourbon. It's aged five years, 80 proof. And as you can tell there, the recipe makeup is everything. All 10 recipes go into this bottle. Now, what are the 10 recipes? Well, you have mash bill B. Mash bill B is made up of these different recipes. One, two, three, four, and five. And what these basically do is they show you uh, mash bill B is 60% corn, 35% per, rye, 5% malted barley, and represents the first five recipes. Mash bill uh, E we'll get to in a second. But as you see there, it's got different letters. What those different letters mean, uh, the V, Z, O, F, K, and Q, those are the different types of yeast they use. Yeast V has a delicate fruit overtone, while yeast K has a slight spice. Yeast O has a rich fruit. Yeast Q has a floral essence, and yeast F has herbal notes. Okay, so those are the five yeasts that they'll use in mash bill B. And you see how that's put together. Now, in mash bill E, it's the other recipes, which is basically the, the five different types of yeast, and then they also changed the recipe in doing 75% corn, 20% rye, and 5% malted barley. That represents the other five recipes. So when you get in the recipe of this particular uh, bourbon, you're going to see that it uses everything. All of it. They throw the kitchen sink at this particular bourbon. Okay? So that's why I wanted to take you through this ride, because as we go through this in the next few weeks, this one has everything in it. The other ones have bits and pieces of everything in it. So like the single barrel, for instance, the, the last one we're going to do, this is one. Uh, of those ten, you saw the ten. Let me go back to it. 
you see that it's made up of all 10 recipes. The single barrel is made up of one recipe. So we'll do that later. Let's get into this, shall we? Um, I got bananas. The ethanol, I can taste, I can smell it a little bit. I got the oak. Bananas really came out strong, though. It's very fruity. Um, there's two different yeasts that go in this that, that add to the fruit profile of this particular bourbon. And it's five years, so it doesn't have to have an aging statement. That's kind of that's kind of nice. And, and it's not just a like a three-year bourbon or a four-year bourbon. This has been sitting a little while. Um, and hopefully it's not too thin. We've got all the tools. We'll find out how we do here. Vanilla, caramel. I mean, all the, all the standards are there, uh, thanks to the char of the barrel. It's not a very dark color, although it's not bad. Uh, it tells me that maybe they have a number one char on the barrel. It's not, it's not a deep char or deep toast. Um, yeah, but it's got some nice color to it. All right. That bananas is just, it's just overwhelming to me. Uh, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> um, a little bit of cinnamon. I wouldn't say it's overbearing. Maybe some, in, uh, anise. If we go back to the flavor wheel, we'll hit that real quick. Um, the flavor wheel, you know, I'm getting uh, the fruits are what's strong with me. So uh, fruit and tropical, if you look up in the corner there, uh, cherry, tropical, berry, uh, cobbler, peach, and apricot. I could tell you maybe there's a little peach in there. I could agree with that. It's a lighter fruit. The uh, mash bills call for a um, delicate fruit and a rich fruit. So if I were to say that, you know, my taste buds were any part of it, I'd tell you peaches and bananas are what I get out of it. Um, now, other people have got bananas on the bourbons that they taste, and this is probably the strongest um, note of bananas I've ever gotten off of a bourbon. This just shouts it. So let's... Um, Ooh, I got a little lime that time. The fruit is heavy with this one. <laughs> All right, let's give it a shot. That has more mouthfeel than I expected for 80 proof. It's got a little bit more of an ethanol burn to it. The, um, the bloom is interesting. The bloom sits on the tongue in the center and doesn't move until you swallow it. And then it just grows a little bit. So that's, that alcohol burn in the center of the tongue just kind of sits there. <clears throat> Sometimes it coats the whole tongue. This time it just sat in the center, like waiting for something to happen. Um, it's actually quite... Um, I don't know if this is what I had before or not. There's, there's nothing thin about this. Um, for, an, for an 80 proof uh, bourbon, I, this is a great starter bourbon. I, I've talked about this before. Uh, for people that are just getting started, the Four Roses is a really good one to start with. It's 80 proof. It's still going to hit you a little bit. It's got some flavor to it and it's got some spice to it. That's one of the things I caught out of it. Um, with this having two different mash bills meshed together, that means you're going to have 35% rye and 20% rye. Now, that doesn't mean that you've got 55% rye because you've also got to take into consideration the percentage of the corn that's in it and the malted barley. So if you had to average it all together, you might end up with 30% rye or 32% rye or something like that. Um, so it does have some nice rye spice to it. It's got a buttery back end, um, which is kind of that rye um, influence, which I always like. I love a buttery finish. I really do. Um, it's 80 proof. It's not hanging on that glass very much. Didn't expect it to.
The finish on this, as soon as you, as soon as you get that swallow down, it's got a lot happening. The finish is actually really nice. Um, it's got a lot of the stuff that you'd want in a bourbon, like the cinnamons and the caramels and things like that. But it's also got a little bit of a that fruity overtone. It's got a pear or an apple um, in that finish. On the on the palate itself. Uh, I'm still getting some of that banana, and I'm still getting some of the uh, vanilla, light caramel, um, maybe a white pepper on the back end as well, which kind of surprises me a little bit. Um, white pepper is used a lot in Asian food, and uh, I, I didn't get that when I was doing the Suntory last week, uh, but I'm getting it with this. It's a white pepper or maybe a green pepper, uh, peppercorn. Um, if you've never tried green pepper or white pepper in your Asian food when you make it, I'm telling you. Yeah, it's got a really nice fruity tone to it. Um, I will tell you the more that I drink it, the thinner the mouthfeel becomes. And why is that? Because the ethanol is no longer burning. That's why they tell you to take that first dram and hold it for 10 to 12 seconds so you can get past that burn of the ethanol and then really start to experience the drink. So on the first taste, the mouthfeel wasn't bad. Now as I've gotten into it, now I've had three uh, sips of this, now the mouthfeel, mouthfeel is starting to, to me feel a little thin. So it's water time. Water time, you know it's water time. I know, don't quit your day job. <laughs> Can you imagine me behind the bar somewhere? Can I have some water with that? You want water time, hey! And they're gonna go, Can I just have my water, please? <laughs> All right, do I have enough in there to do? Not really, not really. Not gonna go nuts, though. All right. Sometimes when you add water, you will lower potentially the proof of the bourbon. A little bit but you also may improve the viscosity which means you're improving that buttery mouthfeel it's hard to describe what mouthfeel is you either dig it or you don't and it just felt a little thin to me without adding a little bit of water but let's see if it makes a difference I know it makes a difference with the Ezra Brooks the 90 um, although the more I drink that Ezra 90 the more I like it just the way it is. I don't add water to it anymore uh, because it's just, it's just kind of good the way it is. The Ezra 99 I like better, and yes, it has a better mouthfeel. It's the exact same recipe. The 90 and the 99 are the exact same recipe, just one is a higher alcohol by volume. All right. It was really fun. I went to the local bourbon or liquor store the other day, and there was a guy in there looking at different things, and he he was just kind of sitting there, and I, I saw something on the shelf that I thought he might like. And uh, he, he said, he said well, well I, I pointed him to the 1910, the Old Forester 1910, because the liquor store that I go to, we don't see Old Forester 1910 very often. So he was, he was just looking through it, and just a nice old guy. And I said, uh, if you're looking for something unusual that you're not going to see here very often, you should pick up that 1910. He says, what is that? I said, uh, that's Old Forester 1910. It's like probably one of the two or three best bourbons on the market. Definitely the best that Old Forester has. And he says, well, I normally like Woodford Reserve. I said, I do too. And you're not going to get the same spice out of the 1910 that you're going to get out of, Wood, uh, out of a Woodford Reserve. And you're not going to get the same smoke if you're doing the double oaked. But 1910 is a lower proof. It's 94, 96 proof, something like that. Whereas the... One, the 1920 is 115 proof. Definitely spicier. So I, I talked him into that one. I, I took him on a <laughs> basically a tour of everything that was on the shelves. He goes, well, well, I'm glad I ran into you. You know your stuff. And I went, ah, Bourbon Stewart, ah, ah. <laughs> this is not for naught, you know? <laughs> I've, I've learned a lot. All right. Let's uh, let's check uh, let's check the mouthfeel and and how this stands up on water. Mm -hmm. 
that actually brought a little bit of that ethanol burn back. I don't know why. I, I essentially lowered the proof of this bottle by adding a little bit of water to it. But it brought the ethanol burn back and definitely improved the mouthfeel. Yeah, that's better. And I probably only added maybe a quarter of an ounce. I didn't add a lot. I didn't have a lot in the glass to begin with. Yeah, and, and I'm getting, um, even now, some of that ethanol that I stopped getting before I added water to it. As we get into the, the legs, the finish, and, and it goes down. I, I'm actually quite pleased with water on that one. So um, for a new drinker, this is a good one to start with. We're going to find out if it's any good on ice now. Oh, here it is. I was going to say, did I forget my ice? That would have really ticked me off. <laughs> Yeah, we'll do this one. Sorry about the noise. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Beautiful, clear ice cube. If I am ever a bartender in a bar that you go to, I will be pointing out the beautiful clear ice cubes that I use in your drink. I'll say, look at it! Because <laughs> it's so elegant. Yeah, what Zach said. Oh. So when are you going to attempt to make a batch of something? You know, Zach, I've thought about that. I don't think I'm going to start with bourbon. But after watching the entire series of MASH again, I am considering trying a gin still. And if I can do a gin still and the gin is drinkable and isn't lighter fluid like... <laughs> Like they said it was on MASH. Maybe someday. And that's part of what I can learn if I become an executive bourbon steward. And then beyond that, if I wanted to, if I wanted to spend the money and I wanted to really get into it, there is something called Moonshine University that people go to if they want to start a distillery. I don't know that I could do anything better than anybody else has done, and there are so many bourbons out there. Oh my gosh. Just in the last couple of weeks, I picked up some that I had never seen before. And then there's some that I picked up that I don't see very often that I was happy to pick up. I have bottles of it, but I got more because I like it and I want to share it. I got a friend that's, I think, coming up either this weekend or next week. And he has asked me, what should I start with? What's a good bourbon to start with? And this is one I'm going to save. I'm not going to drink all this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll save this one because it's a good one for him to start with, but I'm going to take him on a tour of some of the different bourbons, and that's going to be fun. And we might even do it here for you to see. I'll let you know. All right, let's go over this gorgeous ice cube. <laughs> ice sphere. Oh, Barkley's freaking out. What's the matter, boo? Come here. Come say hi. Barkley Boo says hello. He wondered why I raised my voice. He's fine. You're fine, aren't you, baby boy? Yeah. Oh, am I going to get kisses? No. Okay. Yeah, I almost got kisses. All right. Down you go. All right. Do not lick my toes. Not into that. Yes, I'm actually barefoot for a change. I never, I never have bare feet. But I was in a hurry. <laughs> and socks take so long. All right. I got a Barkley hair in my mouth. All right. The ethanol's gone. The flavor's still there. I'm still getting that beautiful apple and, and, and pear, vanilla, caramel. Uh, the flavor's still good. Uh, there is... I got a little banana that time, too. I didn't get that before as much on the palate, but I'm getting it back now. And I didn't get it on water, either. But the ethanol burn is gone. Um, 80 proof, do you mix it with something? Do you use 7-Up or ginger ale or tonic water or soda or Coke? or You might lose this altogether. Um, just on ice, I've lost a lot of what makes... I mean, you'll still get some flavor from it, but just on ice, I've lost a, a lot of that punch that makes a bourbon something that I enjoy. Um, some people may not like that burn. 
put it on ice. Drink it this way. Just drink it over ice so you can get the flavors. The other thing about ice, and I've said this before and I'll say it again. When you put bourbon on ice, you cool it down. Duh. But when you cool it down, you mute. Excuse me. <laughs> you mute the flavor profiles. Um, it just... It's, so if you're in a room and you yell and it's a big room, you might get a lot of ambience. But if you're in like a studio and you yell, your voice won't go very far. There's no ambience. It's a dead room. That's kind of the way I feel about ice on Four Roses is it just deadens the drink. There's still flavor there, but there's nothing zesty about it. There's nothing spicy about it anymore. still tastes good though, which may be enough for anybody because some people just don't like that bite. And if that's the case, then four roses on an ice sphere is perfect for you. All right, we got one more thing we're going to do. And I think, I think I'm going to do this with all four bottles. I'm going to do the same drink with all four bottles um, just because I'm curious. Now, we'll see if that is, if we actually do that, but we're going to make a black Manhattan. Um, I had wanted to make a black Manhattan before uh, because the, the, the bourbon that I was using was the Old Forester 100. And on the Old Forester website, they have a recipe for a black Manhattan. I thought, hey, that sounds pretty good. But in order to make it the, the Old Forester way, you have to buy Old Forester's bitters. And... I just bought a crap ton of bitters. I didn't want to buy theirs. And with shipping, it got pretty expensive. And how many, I mean, if I'm going to go to Louisville, which I'm planning on doing soon, I'm going to go to Bardstown in September, uh, I will stop by Old Forester and buy it off the shelf. It'll be cheaper. I'll have it. I can do what I want to do with it. And I might buy a whole bunch of their stuff. So, um, but we're going to do a Black Manhattan the way that Four Roses talks about doing it. And for that, I'm going to pull out my new glass. Uh, I do not have my mixing glass, but that's all right. We'll use this. We'll just use this. It's basically the same thing. And for this, we have to pay homage to George. So here's George. Oh, that's Dad. He's not living anymore, but we named the ice bucket after him because it kind of looks a little bit like him. So this was his ice bucket. So this thing is older than I am. And that's old. <laughs> that's old. Uh, okay. So you know what? We'll do it in here. We're gonna we're gonna add some ice to this, buddy. We're just gonna we're just gonna go a little nuts so we can get it nice and cold, really fast. There we go. That ought to do the trick. All right. So George, you can sit over there on the side. Smile for the camera. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. Like it. Hey, George. All right. See, see. This is what I'm saying. George, you get it. Doesn't he look like my dad a little bit? Anyway, uh, that was his, and uh, I'm proud to continue to use it. And one of these days, I'm going to go find his decanter. He had a, a beautiful decanter set with glasses and everything. And I think I know where it is, but I'm not certain. <laughs> I hope it's okay. Um, but it's gorgeous, and I would really like to use it. Yeah, George, you and me, man. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> I'm wasting time. I'm sorry. I'm not wasting time. We're talking to George. All right. Thank you for, for tuning in, George. I you picked the right night, so I'm glad you're here. <laughs> All right, so we're doing a black Manhattan, and I'm going to need these because my eyeballs don't work anymore. All right, so we do one and a half. Now, this is supposed to be done with a small batch, and the small batch has a higher proof. The small batch is mm, 90 proof, okay? But... Since I'm going to do the same drink with all four Four Roses products over the next four weeks, 
We're just going to start right here. So that's an ounce and a half. Then we do an ounce of the vermouth. And this is this is good vermouth. I like this stuff. And that is three quarters of an ounce. So I need an ounce, which ought to be maybe that one. They write these so small. That's one ounce. Okay, so we'll do that. Good, good, good. And then, and this is the first time I've gotten to use these bitters, so I'm kind of excited about it. These are the black walnut bitters. You can tell it hasn't been opened yet. We get my handy dandy knife out. If I can figure out. <laughs> is there a blade? Yeah, there's a blade. Pop that sucker open. There we go. And it's two dashes of black, <laughs> black walnut bitters. One, two. Ooh, that's good. I like that. It's not bitter at all. Num, 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 num. I like that. And then we grab out the old spoon here. Give it a stir. Stir until the glass is cold, which it already is. I mean, that's cold. It says stir until the glass is frosted, but this is not going to... Well, actually it is. <laughs> it did frost. Normally they say to stir for about 30 seconds. Let me grab, uh, grab this bad boy. I don't like this one as well as the other one. So this would be a black Manhattan made with four roses and um, the vermouth and the black walnut bitters. Okay, so what I'm getting out of that with this drink is the vermouth. There is an ounce of vermouth in this and an ounce and a half of the four roses. And the four roses is just not standing up to the vermouth. Uh, the, the, the vermouth is a bully in this case. Um, so we're going to fix that. And we're going to add a little bit more of the four roses. I'm just going to put it right in the glass. It's already cold. It's already good to go. We'll just give this a little stir in here. Now I'm up to three ounces of the four roses versus one ounce of vermouth in this glass. And that's going to change each week as we go through the different uh, bourbons that have different proofs. That's a little better. That makes more sense. Um, yeah, I mean, the vermouth is still a bit, little bit heavy on this one, um, but I like it. That's not the right cork. I wonder why it wasn't going on there. Yeah, there we go. All right, I'm going to cork this, get it ready for my buddy who's going to visit in the next week or so, uh, maybe two, and uh, that'll be ready for him. Uh, in the meantime, again, next week we're going to move this series forward. This is the Four Roses 80 proof regular bottom of the, well, bottom of the stack. Let's say it that way. Next one is the Small Batch, which is 90 proof. I'm going to need these to do the rest. After that is the small batch select, which is 104 proof. <laughs> That'll make a difference in this. And then the last one is the single barrel. And this one is 100 proof. But it's a single barrel. I, that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say anything else. I'll, I'll ruin it if I say something else. I'm just not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to do it. So tune in next week. Uh, this is a good one. We've already been here about 35 minutes, so I haven't taken too much of your time. This We'll be able to move forward with the rest of your Thursday. I've got chicken over there on the counter that I made, and I want to eat. <laughs> so that'll be coming up. Uh, George, uh, I know. I know, George. You're right. 
So, one of the things that's been an issue with me is the garnish. In this case, a cherry is supposed to go in the drink. So, at first I was very resistant to doing any garnishes at all. But then I found out the power of the garnish of a lemon peel or an orange peel along the lines. Uh, you express it, you can flame it, you can do a lot of things to it, and it does change the drink dramatically. Um, I was surprised at the effect of a nice lemon or orange peel garnish. <sighs> Cherries, since you don't express the cherry or flame the cherry or do anything rather than stick a toothpick through it and put it on the side of the glass. I just haven't gone there, George. So uh, I know you're supposed to garnish with a cherry. I just haven't done it because I have to buy the cherries. And I don't like cherries. <laughs> I mean, when I was a kid, I used to climb my grandmother's cherry trees and I'd chew them up and spit out the pits and get yelled at by my grandfather who had to mow the lawn. But that's okay. I mean, that's what it was. But... Those were not the same thing, essentially. I just, I haven't gotten into the cherries. And I, and I should, and I know it's a jar, and I know it's sealed and should last. I know I need to do it, George. You're right. I need to do it. I just, I have to read what you say. Look, Sardos are on a different level. All right. Okay. All right. Next week, when we come back and do the small batch, I will find the cherries because it's the right thing to do. All right. But with 80 proof and with uh, the vermouth taking over, I don't know that it would have done me any good to die anyway. So, George, thank you for the recommendation. I know it. Sometimes I just have to be pushed. Thank you, sir. Uh, I appreciate it. I, I will do that. I will get some cherries for next week. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I, gosh, this has been fun. I love doing this, and I love the fact that you come along for the journey and, and watch with me and make suggestions like, get your damn cherries, dude. <laughs> I need to do that. Um, you know, Kevin is in Las Vegas this week. Hopefully, he's going to bring me back some bottles. I've asked him. Uh, but he's out there, and uh, his time is uh, uh, 5.09 p.m., so hopefully he's having dinner somewhere really nice uh, right now with his family. Um, but I've asked him to bring me back some stuff, so let's see if he does it. <laughs> I'm hopeful. Out there in Las Vegas, he found a beer bar in the art district where you can get a, a, uh, a pour of Elmer T. Lee for 18 bucks. Why am I here? <laughs> All right. Again, thank you very much. I can go on forever. I do appreciate it. Um, I'm going to let you go, and uh, we will see you uh, next Thursday or possibly sooner. It's a weird world. You never know. Possibly sooner right here on Beautiful Bourbon. Please do share this. If you like this and you enjoy yourself like I do, um, let people know that we're doing this. I'm not asking for anything other than just you know people to check it out and to enjoy themselves and uh uh, you know, comparing this to a podcast where you hear people drink, that's just weird. <laughs> this is more fun. You get to see it. You get to see it being done. And uh, maybe I got a face for radio, but that's all right. Do share it. We're on uh, Facebook where you are. Uh, Instagram at Beautiful Bourbon. Um, the blog is at BeautifulBourbon.com. Um, I'm sure there's other stuff that I'm not thinking of. So... Do share, talk about us, uh, and in the meantime, we'll see you at the latest next Thursday. Take it easy. Peace.